So hello guys, and welcome to another video. And over the past few months, there have been quite a lot of Mario remakes either being announced or released. And it's pretty interesting, because over the course of the Mario franchise, there have really only been a few games that have been fully remade. Like, off the top of my head, I can think of Super Mario All-Stars, Super Mario Advance, actually not even all the Super Mario Advance games, only the first one and the last one, since only Super Mario Bros. 2 and Super Mario Bros. 3 are the ones that were really fully remade there. And then Super Mario 64 DS was also remade, but in that case, that was actually a much different experience from the original version of Mario 64. So even though it's a remake, it wasn't like a faithful remake, it, it was kind of like a different experience there. And then also, the only like recent example of this is Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga and Bowser's Inside Story on the 3DS. But yeah, that's really about it. Everything else has mostly been like either like enhanced ports or remasters or like things that you really wouldn't consider to be a full remake. But now, over the past few months, we've been getting a ton of stuff, like Super Mario RPG, Mario vs. Donkey Kong, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, and Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. The only one out of all of these that wouldn't be considered a full remake is debatably Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, because of the title kind of makes it seem like it's like a remaster, and it also kind of looks more like a remaster than a remake. But who knows, maybe when we get the next batch of information about the game, the game will look much more polished and much more like a base Switch game, because that's mostly how it goes with next level games. When they first reveal a game, it looks a bit rough at first, but it looks very polished by the time the game releases. And I think that probably has to do with, like, their lighting engine or, like, just kind of, like, how their games look in general. But it's pretty interesting. But almost all of these games that we're getting are full remakes, which is really interesting. Like, you don't really see, like I said, you don't really see many full remakes from Nintendo. And it's just pretty exciting in general, since I feel like these games definitely deserve a remake. And I've heard a lot of people say some things about the fact that Mario is getting a lot of remakes. Like, one common thing I've heard quite a lot is that these remakes don't matter because they're just filler content that Nintendo is kind of padding out the Switch library before the next console releases. And they don't really mean much significance to the grand scope of the franchise. And honestly... I kind of disagree with that. Like, I do understand the point that they would be saving these remakes or remaking these games towards the end of the Switch's lifespan because they would be saving the resources for completely new games on the next console. But at the same time, it's not like Nintendo was just throwing darts at a board selecting a random game to remake. Like, they didn't select Super Mario RPG or The Thousand Year Door out of nowhere. There is definitely a significance to these games being remade. Like, we go from Origami King, which I did think is a good game, that was pretty restricted to a lot of people and had like a very different gameplay style from what people were expecting from the Paper Mario series. Well, I mean, at least the Paper Mario series prior to Super Paper Mario. But we go from that to Thousand Year Door. That is just a huge jump, and there is definitely some significance behind that. And then we also get Super Mario RPG just a few months before. And it's just crazy. Like, there has to be some significance to that. It's not like Nintendo was just randomly choosing to remake these games. They are strategically doing this right before the next console, the see, like, the kind of gauge the interest in some of these Mario series and everything, like the Mario RPGs, which have been mostly kind of struggling since the early 2010s. And they fully bring that back 
with these remakes and like kind of fully flesh them out in HD. So I feel like that's kind of preparing for some potential RPGs on the next console. Like maybe like a true successor, the 64 and Thousand Year Door on the next Nintendo console or a sequel to Super Mario RPG or a new Mario and Luigi game on the next console. Then we also have the original Mario vs. Donkey Kong and that's the one they chose to remake. Not any of the minis games. They didn't make a random, like, minis lemming style game out of nowhere. They chose to remake the original, which is based on DK94. And it's a formula that we haven't seen in nearly 20 years. And the last time, it's funny, the last time we actually saw it was the game that is being remade. So it's kind of funny there, but maybe they were bringing back the DK94 style to kind of expand upon on the next Nintendo console with another Mario vs. Donkey Kong game. And with Luigi's Mansion 2, I feel like that's a little different case from the other games that are being remade. I feel like that's mostly due to the success of Luigi's Mansion 3, since Luigi's Mansion 3 sold extremely well, and it kind of makes sense that they would release another Luigi's Mansion game, or Luigi's Mansion product, while they're working on the next game. So, I feel like even though Luigi's Mansion 2 is a great game, I feel like this remaster doesn't carry as much significance as the other games that are being remade, but I still feel like it, it, it is an interesting case and everything, and it is a pretty underrated game in general, but... With the main three games that I mentioned, the RPGs and Mario vs. Donkey Kong, like, I feel like it's not really kind of worth just, like, writing these games off as if they don't matter. Because this is a huge shift in how Nintendo has been handling the Mario franchise. And I feel like, like I said, they are strategically kind of releasing these and they're also releasing these around the time that they're doing a ton of other really creative and interesting ideas for the Mario franchise. Like, Super Mario Bros. Wonder is basically like a really, like, basically a creative return to form for the franchise. Like, there's so many wacky and interesting ideas in the game, and is a huge jump in quality from the new Super Mario Bros. series. Then we also have Peach Showtime, which is a completely new idea. And there's really interesting aspects of this game, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Then we also got the Mario movie as well, and I mean, while it is mostly kind of um, using references and things that we kind of already know what to expect about the Mario franchise, it still is kind of developing the Mario franchise into a medium that isn't that wasn't really tapped into much before like with a movie like a full animated movie so there were a lot of like creative things about the movie as well um kind of like how some of the designs and the world how that was portrayed i feel like that definitely brought a lot to the Mario franchise and the characters were very expressive as well, which was actually partially an inspiration for Super Mario Bros. Wonder. But I've been thinking, I feel like that inspiration kind of carried on into the fact that they're actually remaking these games. Like, Super Mario RPG and Thousand Year Door, they're two story-driven games that have an emphasis on dialogue, which is something that is partially done in the movie, but I feel like it's something where, I feel like in Nintendo's kind of um, thinking here, I feel like they're re-releasing these games and kind of bringing back the Mario RPGs, like for people who enjoyed the story and dialogue from the movie, even though it wasn't like very deep in the movie, I mean, it is a pretty simple story in the movie. It is more in depth than what you would expect from most of the Mario franchise. So I guess I can kind of see how that would make sense. And then Mario versus Donkey Kong, it kind of makes sense with like the rivalry between Mario and Donkey Kong in the movie. Um, so I feel like that's subtly kind of um, inspired by the movie with the fact that they decided to remake that. And then um, 
another game that's not a remake with Princess Peach Showtime. Like, Princess Peach had, like, a fairly interesting role in the movie, quite different than most of the games that she's in. So it makes sense that they would kind of do something with that idea and make Princess Peach Showtime. So a lot of these releases are making quite a lot of sense, since it seems like both, like, inspiration from the movie and then kind of setting some expectations for the next console is kind of what led to these remakes happening in the first place. I don't think they just randomly chose these remakes. So I don't think it's fair at all to just write these games off as just simply being remakes and not having any significance to them. Because I don't think on the next console they'll just completely abandon these ideas um, that they've been bringing back. Like the next Mario Party game, um, kind of tying that in with another game that's not necessarily a remake, but still kind of brought back an older idea, so it's a similar idea to these remakes, um, with Mario Party Superstars, that game kind of set the expectation that classic Mario Party is coming back, so I don't think they'll abandon that idea with a Mario Party game on the next console. And the same goes with the Mario RPGs and Paper Mario. I don't think they're just going to completely abandon the Mario RPGs again and then release another, like, extremely experimental Paper Mario game um, that has, like, character restrictions again. Um, that wouldn't make any sense if Nintendo was kind of setting expectations with the Thousand Year Door remake. Like, I just don't see them kind of reversing all of the things that they're doing with these remakes. And then with Mario vs. Donkey Kong, I don't think they'll go back to the Lemmings style gameplay that was prevalent on Nintendo's like touchscreen consoles. Um, because one, Nintendo pri doesn't really primarily use touchscreen gameplay anymore. And then two, with the Mario vs. Donkey Kong remake, I feel like that's setting the expectation of like a very solid puzzle platformer in the style of DK94 in the original Donkey Kong. So I don't think these remakes are just going to be forgotten. I think there's definitely a lot of significance and weight behind them, so I just think they're pretty important in general. But yeah, anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, and make sure to check out my Discord server and Twitter if you want to. Goodbye.